Hey everyone, and welcome back. <clears throat> so, as you can tell, Forge is primed. And while I'm waiting for it to dry, to get my, uh, my first coat of paint on, I figured I would shoot a video and show you guys uh, what else I've been working on. So let's get to it. So if you can't, if you don't know what that is, it is a carpenter's tool chest. Walls for tools. Uh, as you know, it takes a long time to build things by hand uh, with nothing but hand tools. So I thought, <clears throat> you know, hey, I need the storage and I need it now. Uh, real estate is a premium in my small shop and I need something that will tuck away or give me storage. And I can't do anything on the wall because I'm renting. So this is what I came up with. I found this about 45 minutes away from me and I asked the guy, is it built good and strong? Is it, is it, is it solid or is it a piece of junk? He said, no, it's solid. So I went ahead and uh, went down there and picked it up and yeah, it's the construction. Uh, it's not fine furniture or anything, but the construction is pretty good. I mean, this box is somewhere between if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere between 75 and 100 years old. If I had to guess. It might not be that old, but... <clears throat> I mean, if it's not that old, that's better for me. Because <laughs> that means it'll last a little bit longer. But, uh, it, gives me, it gives me a place to store my tools. Um, the great thing about it is, <clears throat> once I put casters on it, it will slide perfectly fit perfectly into the cavity right between my legs underneath my apron on my bench um, there are some things that it didn't come the way you see it now I had to um, I had to strip all of the paint off it was a probably eight to ten coats of paint uh, there was white gray green yellow anyways the last coat was black and so I took about two days and, and used some uh, paint stripper and stripped all the paint off of it and then I sanded it down with like 120 grit maybe even coarser than that maybe 80 grit <clears throat> and got it all all the all the uh, the surfaces paint uh, mostly paint free and uh, smoothed out all the all the rough all the rough edges and such. Um, after that, I had to deal with one thing that was bothering me as it smelled. It stank to high heaven. It was not an ungodly smell but a smell that I was not going to tolerate in my, um, in my dwelling. It was not going in the cabin the way it was. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> it stank, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just let it air out, and it'll go away, and whatever. And I let it air out for a few days, still stank, used paint stripper, Stripped all the old paint off, sanded it down, and it still stank. So, needless to say, the scent got up into the pores of the wood, and, well, it was lingering around. So, what do I do with that? Oh, there's my alarm going off telling me it's time for my uh, first coat of paint. Give me just a second. Sorry about that. Um, so I had to get rid of the smell somehow. So I went online and I started searching for uh, remedies to get the smell out of old furniture, old wood and whatnot. Does it just smell like dead old people? <clears throat> it's about the best way I can describe it. <laughs> and uh, 
Anyways, man, the bees are out in full force right now. <clears throat> and uh, so I went about it a few different ways. I'm like, well, okay, I already tried all the other stuff, stripping the paint off, sanding it down, it still smelled. Let's go uh, with a little bit more aggressive route. So uh, I said, well, let's. we need to kill the bacteria and get the moisture out. That's that's the key right there, right? So uh, sprayed with Lysol, still smelled. May have killed bacteria, but it still smelled. Um, I should have went with bleach, but I thought at the time that maybe bleach would make it smell even worse. Um, so I held off on the bleach. And then what I did was... Uh, I used a little thing at the I got at the store called Damp Rid, and I put a little container of that <clears throat> inside the box. But here's the problem: it's not just inside the box; it's the whole box, the whole like the drawers, the underneath, all that stuff. I don't know why I'm turning around because I can just see the behind me from my camera. But <clears throat> um, so what I did was I. Uh, after that didn't get rid of it, <clears throat> I let it sit in there for a day or two. It didn't get rid of it. And so I went with the next solution, which was well, the next idea, which was going with a basically uh, a damp rag of uh, full strength ammonia. So I got the ammonia going, uh, scrubbed the whole box, let it sit for a few days and dry out. And it still smelled. Not as bad, but... It still smelled something I wasn't going to tolerate and said okay well let's keep looking I put the damp rid back in there <clears throat> while I waited and what I ended up doing that worked was a another suggestion online which was 24 parts of distilled white vinegar and one part olive oil so I put that into a spray bottle, shook it up, sprayed down the entire box. Every every last square inch of this box was sprayed with it. Drawers, underneath, outside, inside, the whole nine yards. I let it sit for about five or ten minutes and then just, you know, scrubbed it in. And now it smells like regular furniture, wood, or whatever. Um, I still, I'm still going to sand it. I'm going to go over it. Uh, I'm going to go over it one last time with, uh, well, I'm, I'm getting ready to go on vacation, so to speak. <clears throat> I'm going to go visit, uh, I'm going to go visit, uh, my daughters and my grandkids in Virginia. <clears throat> so flying cross country to Virginia to see all my, my kids and grandkids and, <clears throat> and then I'm going to fly to my buddy Roger's place and in Indiana and then I'm coming back so while I'm gone I will be letting the box the the chest air out <clears throat> it doesn't smell anymore so I can put it in the house and just let it air out inside the house um, I don't want to set it out in the Sun I live in Washington it's it's going to rain uh, so I can't just leave it out. Plus, if I left it out in the op outside, even covered, um, <laughs> I'd probably come home to like raccoons had made it their home or something, uh, or something of that nature. But anyway, so I'm gonna let it dry inside the house, lid open, the damper it in there. I'll put some coffee grounds. I'm just gonna crack the lid cover it with coffee grounds and newspaper charcoal stuff like that it'll absorb all the moisture and when I get home I will do it of one final sanding and uh, and then well then do the finishing uh, I plan on finishing the inside I don't know how I'm going to do the inside probably just I don't know probably just some BLO or something like that um, the outside I'm going to go with the stuff I've never used before, um, but I figured what the heck, it's like a, I think it's called spar poly or something like that, like a spar, 
varnish slash polyurethane finish. So I'm going to give it a shot. See how that goes. Uh, there are some interesting features about this uh, tool chest that I wanted to go over. <clears throat> um, if you, you, you may or may not be able to see, but from here to right here, there was a chain or a leather strap or something that I have to, I have to find a way to, to get rid of that or to uh, replace that. And so right now I'm just propping it up with some a two by four. Um, there was some storage for saws that are over there. I took them off when I did the sanding, but um, they're just you know storage to to or places to store your saws up on the lid. And um, also some things that are missing that I'll have to do that I'm going to do. I'll use that forge and I want to forge up some handles not only for the outside but for the drawer pulls too. So these I'll need to do because it only came with three the other one was missing so instead of putting the old hardware back on I'm going to make some new hardware on the forge and so we'll get four new handles and then two chest handles one on either side and I'll probably just go with leather um, unless I can find some nice size chain or something like that to hold it open and I'm going to, uh, like I said in the beginning, I'm going to put it on casters. I've already got the casters, so I'll add some lumber underneath, and which will be tucked up in there. And I figure it's going to give me about three quarters, three quarters to an inch, somewhere in there, closer to three quarter, I think, where it's just you won't be able to see the casters, but it'll be floating. It'll look like it's floating about three quarters of an inch off the off the floor. And like I said, it fits right into that. I mean, perfect fit right underneath my bench, right in the center. It's perfect. So I'll be able to to uh, grab it, pull, wheel it out, and grab all my tools and put it right back. It's perfect. Um, but these are really, really deep drillers. Let's see if you can. <clears throat> I liked it because it's pretty good construction. It's not. I mean, it's not dovetailed or anything like that or finger jointed, but look at how long these drawers are. They're pretty long. So, you got that. And it is all real wood, obviously. Um, so, you got these two drawers here and one big wide drawer that's also deep. I mean, these are pretty dang deep. But the cool thing about it is that when they built it they wanted to make it you know transportable and I don't know I guess maybe anti-theft uh, but what it is and you've got like a looks like a 3 8 maybe 7 16 I don't know if they even make dowels that size uh, I don't know what size it is off the top of my head looks like about three-eighths uh, dowel that goes well you can see this one uh, dowel goes down from here from the inside of the box and goes into these two little uh, tabs with holes drilled in it <clears throat> and then obviously you have You have one on either side here, and they're not exactly centered, or perfectly centered, I guess. Uh, they had them marked, and I remarked them after I, after I sanded it all down. But this is right, and this is left. So they go in here. That was a pretty neat feature; I've never seen it before. So they go in, and then you you put the dowel in through here. <clears throat> and it keeps the drawers from coming out while you're, you know, while you're lugging this thing around. Um, I don't know if it's really good enough for theft. 
uh, they would, you know, if you had it locked with the hasp, uh, they wouldn't be able to get your drawer open. They would just take your whole box. Uh, so I don't really, call, I wouldn't really say it was. It's for anti-theft purposes, but I would say it's great, uh, a good design for uh, keeping your drawers closed while you're moving it around and whatnot. So kudos on the designer for that. <clears throat> and that's about it. It would have just taken me way too long to build one um, and get it. And, and I'll still build, I'll build another one. <clears throat> you can bet on that. I'll be building my own um, eventually. And it will be much, much nicer than this. But this this is uh, this was my solution to getting tool storage and getting it quickly. And I'll always have the box. I'll always have the tool chest. So there you go. Uh, if you're digging what I'm doing, <clears throat> give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. You know the drill. Uh, friends and family, I love you. And everybody else, I'll see you on the next video.